<laughs> hey everybody uh welcome to the office 365 false or the roadmap show or whatever you want to call it we've got all four of us that's a special treat it's been a while it's been a while um we hope everyone is good we hope everyone in the south is preparing safely for the storms that are coming through um but we have 56 updates to talk about today so we will get started within development and we will pass it to tom <clears throat> so i'm going to go ahead and talk about stream which will be a little bit of a theme here in all three of our categories so in microsoft stream search video transcript for stream on sharepoint it's going to allow users who are viewing a video to search for keywords contained in the video transcript. This feature is available on video files that have transcripts, which would make sense, and are stored in OneDrive or SharePoint. They can nav through, navigate through the search results and click on a portion of the transcript to be taken to the respective spot on the video, which I think is really cool. So looking forward to that one. There's also, and that's going to be in February of next year, and the second one, same date, is Microsoft Stream on SharePoint View Video Analytics in Playback Experience. So this feature will allow users to view analytics for videos stored in OneDrive or SharePoint for which they have view permissions. The analytics are shown as an overlay during video playback and can be toggled on or off by selecting the analytics side pane. You'll be able to see stats showing the number of views and viewers for the last 90 days, along with viewership retention, which indicates the part of the videos that are most and least viewed. So I think that's really good. I know that we've had a ton of people, mainly in strategic communications going, hey, can I tell who all watched it and who dropped and stuff like that? And to date, it's always been um, no, but now you're mm -hmm. gonna be able to do that. So look forward to those two coming in February. Well, there's one more um, for stream and that's upload and manage files in the stream web app. Um, and that, that's yes. for stream on SharePoint. And that one's a good one because remember the mobile app that came out, um, what, just a couple weeks ago? And then there was no upload. You couldn't upload, you couldn't manage <laughs> really? the files. Um, well, this is a good first sign because you can do it in the web app. So if you can do it in the web app, then eventually you're going to be able to do it in the mobile. So I'm happy to see this. And that's what we said when the mobile app came out. We said, do not worry. I'm sure it's coming soon. So this is October of uh, 2022. Um, it looks like that's coming. So that's another another one for stream that I saw there. So good stuff there. How about you, Tamara? Oh, I've got Microsoft Lists mobile app support for Android tablet devices. So people will be able to use Microsoft Lists for Android on their Android based tablets to capture track and collaborate on information while on the go. And then also OneNote, the listing in the Microsoft Store. They're replacing the current OneNote for Windows 10 listing in Microsoft Store with OneNote listing. You mean only one one note? <laughs> I know. I mean, don't <laughs> we currently have like three one notes? Yeah. yeah, so I actually even talk about this in my one note session that I do. So there was multiple different one notes with the last version that came out. They had Windows 10 for one note. They had one note for 365, which they just called one note. But obviously one note for Windows 10 is somewhat dated because Windows 11 is out and Microsoft is trying to bring right. people to that. But their roadmap for the last three or four years has been to ultimately try to bring those together into one one note. So that way there's not all the confusion. I, I imagine this is a step in that direction. That's great. great. Well, I have one that just screams Sue Hanley. Um, that's because every time I'm in a session and Sue Hanley's talking about it, she's usually screaming, but in love. I love her. Um, <laughs> and that is create more than one home site. So I'm surprised neither one of uh, you guys mentioned this, but create a customized landing experience for all audiences in your organization with the ability to create up to 10 distinct SharePoint home sites. So multiple home site experiences in SharePoint means you'll be able to target content to specific groups um, for scenarios like different departments, roles, regions, and different things there. Uh, Sue loves that one. She's the queen of intranets, so she's always working with those types of scenarios. So I know that's a feature she has been waiting for for a very long time. So um, I mention her with great love, uh, but that is one that I know she has been waiting, uh, waiting to come out. So up to 10 distinct SharePoint home sites that is coming, uh, coming soon in development, looking for April of 2023. 
Yeah, and that's rolling out to everybody. Yeah, that's a nice one. One other one that I'll mention <clears throat> before we turn it over to the geek person. Uh, <laughs> uh, Microsoft Teams. Team Calendar now includes scheduling form pop-outs. I think this is really cool. So if you're in a Teams calendar, users will now be able to pop out an existing team or existing meeting using the pop-up icon in Teams calendar scheduling form. That basically means that you'll be able to view multiple meetings in different windows. So you can check what's going on there and check different chats while you're trying to set up the meeting that you're working with. So it's less of, oh, well, go ahead and kind of save this one, but it's in draft mode, and then go look at something else, then remember what it is, bring it back. You'll be able to have the various windows open to get the info that you need to create the information that you have to uh, when you create a new uh, meeting entry. And that's going to be in October. So coming up here real quick. I feel like you get a pop out and you get a pop Pretty out. Much. Now this gets a pop out. I love it though. 14 I million love little it. pop out screens all over your screen here. And you know what? I pop every one of them out. Exactly. <laughs> all right. Um, well, Adam, why don't you take us through the, uh, the adminish things that are in development. <laughs> <laughs> sure. So uh, there, there's two that I'll mention on in development for right now for this week. Both of them are actually audit related, which is kind of interesting. Um, so first and foremost, they basically say that they're changing how scoping is going to work with some of the audit information that you get with the idea being behind RBAC or role based access control. They're saying IT departments and large organizations are built in a way that some of the day to day tasks are delegated to specific people or specific roles. This could be done based off of geography based off of um, actual role inside of the organization, based off of any number of things. Um, but that's going to now start being shown up inside of your actual audit log. So if you've gone through and you've done permissions of saying, oh, people that are in this department in this office building get access to certain information, that type of stuff is going to actually start showing up in your auditing system, which makes sense. Um, RBAC and, and lease privileges in general consider the best practice and what Microsoft has been pushing for a bit. But for a, for a while now, that type of information is kind of hard after you set it to get an understanding of who has what, um, other than going to and grant annually looking at permissions of each person. So them starting to put that stuff in the audit log should just make it easier for organizations to be on top of that, know what's going on. Uh, and the second one, which again is also going to be audit related that I thought was kind of cool, was the idea of Microsoft 365 Compliance Center audit support for customer key. And again, this is the idea that audit information is going to start having more and more valuable stuff uh, that you're going to go through and need as an organization. And when you go through and look at it, um, some customers were basically indicating, hey, we don't like that if you can just get in and access the audit log, you have access to it. Um, so they're going to allow you to take your customer key if you've gone through and uploaded a custom key inside of the Office 365 system to allow you to go in and actually uh, basically encrypt your audit information. So if you need to go in and get your audit information, the only way to get into it is by uh, decrypting it with a customer uploaded key. Awesome. All right. Well, then I think that takes us to rolling out. Um, so, Tamara, what do you like about rolling out? Microsoft Teams live transcript for Teams meetings for DOD. <laughs> so excited. Um, I'm excited about this for several reasons. Um, in the DOD, you're dealing with people who are overseas and um, where English may not be their first language. So I think having a good transcript, which I think Microsoft does a really good job of doing, having a good transcript along with the audio, I think is going to make it so much easier for people with English as a second language to pick up on what is being said. Also, just the people who talk with marbles in their mouth, I think this will really help you be able to understand what's going on there. And then also the Microsoft Teams view video recordings and attendance reports inside an LMS. So teachers and students will be able to access video recordings and attendance reports inside of their LMS itself. Microsoft Teams meeting LTI app has enabled availability of these artifacts inside an LMS learning management system. The feature will be available for use 
in all of the LMS incorporating teams meetings in the LTI app. So that's coming out worldwide. So I think that is fairly exciting and I'll stop there so I don't take everything. <laughs> well, Tom, I'll let you go next, sir. <clears throat> okay, I'll take a couple here. Uh, the Muppet Show feature, which is rolling out and should be out in September. Crazy hands, crazy hands. And that is automatically view up to 49 videos, seven by seven in Teams meeting. So I keep thinking back to the opening of the Muppet Show when they keep expanding out the screen. They have all the little Muppets in the little you know, curtain window and the whole bit. But that's going to be uh, on the screen by, or actually it currently supports a maximum of nine, three by three, for seeing more than nine, users need to manually select a large gallery view. With this update, users will be able to automatically see up to 49 seven by seven on their screen by default without an explicit action. The actual number of videos seen by a user will depend upon hardware device capabilities. So if you don't have a really great machine, you may not be seeing all of those, but again, that's gonna start happening automatically. Uh, it's rolling out this month. And going back to the Microsoft Stream theme here, Edit the transcript text directly in the UI of stream on SharePoint. So this enables you to edit the transcript text of a stream directly in the transcript transcript pane. <laughs> Say that and, three times and, fast. No, I'm not going to, I can't make me. The future, the feature, <laughs> wow. Okay, the feature also works with any video stored in SharePoint or OneDrive for Business that contains transcripts. You do have to have edit capabilities to do that, but this will be really nice just to make quick changes instead of you having to go through a whole process uh, that can become very laborious or cumbersome. So look for that. That is rolling out this month too to Microsoft Stream Worldwide. Awesome. Well, I don't have too many, but Viva, the meeting category is Insights coming to the Viva Insights app in Teams. So the meeting category insights can help you align the time spent in meetings with your goals by giving you visibility into the categories of meetings where you spend your time. And then for Viva, reoccurring time booking for breaks, messages, catch up, and learning in Viva. So you can have a v, uh, reoccurring session. So in that email for the Viva Insight subscription where you get the email and it says, do you want to book reoccurring time to do X, Y, and Z? You'll be able to do that uh, coming up, which should be good because I think it's going to be like in small bursts of information there. So those are some Viva updates that are rolling out. So I think those are cool. And I think the last couple of them are admin ad Adamish. So <laughs> we'll pass it to him. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to talk about a ton today, but there there's a few in there that I thought were really cool. Um, one of them that I think is a wonderful thing to happen that's going to grow that if you're if you're not currently doing this, that you have no idea where this matters. Uh, but Microsoft Information Protection apply default label policies to existing documents being edited. So the idea behind here is if you go in and create a default labeling policy, like say you say I want every document that that uh, is gone through and added to the SharePoint site or in this certain section of my my tenant to have a label that's internal only. Well, if you go through and create that default labeling policy, it only matters from that point forward. So that's great if you're smart enough that you've gone in and you've done that before you've deployed anything. But most organizations, the first thing they're doing before users are on Office 365 is not going through and figuring out what they want for their document labeling process in MIP. And so typically this is something that's that's taken on after you've gone through and migrated. And so it was a little incomplete if you go through and say, all right, well, I want everything that's put in my finance department's SharePoint site to go through and have a label for internal finance only, but any existing documents that existed in that finance site already just weren't labeled. It was just, you know, only new things. And so why it was nice to be able to go through and do it didn't necessarily provide you the type of protection that you'd really probably wanting by having a default label applied. Um, well, they're not necessarily going all the way of saying, okay, now everything is going to be protected. But now if you go in and edit a document and then resave it and you have default labeling policies, it's going to apply 
apply that default label to edited documents, which before it didn't do at all. It was only brand new documents. So nice to see this going through. They, they indicate that this preview is available in Word and PowerPoint and the current channel preview. So it sounds like it's only for Word and PowerPoint. Um, won't necessarily be for Excel, although that's the eventual plan is for it to have Excel as well too. Um, but, but nice to see them going through and doing that. I figure this is a good step in the direction of ultimately getting customers a little bit more comfortable with some of the automation and, and AI stuff you can do around MIP labeling. And then the other one that I wanted to mention that I thought was actually kind of cool too, when you go through and look at it, um, when you're getting an idea of everything that's going on, they have um, information protection, maintain label and protection when creating PDF files from Office apps. I think we mentioned this one a couple weeks ago whenever it was going through and being listed uh, and uh, the end development. This is specifically scoped to the US government cloud. So this is going to be GCC, DOD, GCC high. But basically, if you have a label or protection on an Office document, which again, a lot of customers that we're working with on the GCC high side, but then have labels to mark stuff as CUI and then you go in and you print to PDF or convert something to a PDF from Word, Excel or PowerPoint. Um, it's now going to actually carry the label over for protection, which is cool. Again, this is another step of it, of it going to forward and being interesting. Um, I remember earlier this year when they released, you can now label PDF documents, but there there wasn't this, this also, okay, if you have a label that's on a Word file, it still converts over. So again, just nice thing and, and something that's going to help help customers that rely on labels to protect stuff like CUI um, to basically help their users do the right thing by making stuff more intuitive and more user friendly. So again, this will help 80% of the customers that my team works with. So really nice to see and, and happy to see uh, the continued development around this area. Very cool. Very cool. All right, well, moving into launched. Um, let's start with Tamara this time. Sure, Microsoft Teams transcripts for one-on-one -on -one calls. So transcription captures the text version of your call and saves it for later use. So this can be enabled via the control bar within the call window. And that's rolling out worldwide. Uh, apparently it rolled out worldwide January of this year. <laughs> Now that I read it. And then also OneNote, Math Inc. Recognizer Services. The Math Inc. Recognizer Service is part of the Math Assistant feature, and it converts handwritten ink in your notes to math equations for solving math problems. And that rolled out in August. I think that is so cool. I'll never use it, but I think that is really cool. I think it's great for schools. Yes. I use it. I Do use you? it. I use it to help with homework. Yep. Yep, schools, yeah. glorious schools. So I will wrap up my stream theme <laughs> because we have two that are launched now. Uh, one is add or edit multiple captions and transcripts for a video in SharePoint, OneDrive, or stream on SharePoint. So you can upload, download, delete, and replace multiple web VTT caption files, and that stands for web video text tracks for a single video in stream or for a video stored in SharePoint or OneDrive for business. Multiple caption files for one video means you can upload captions and transcripts for different language or dialects, and all the uploaded files will be displayed as both captions inside the video player and as transcripts. So that'll be really nice if that's what you tend to do with your videos. <clears throat> and then the other one is on-demand caption and generation uh, transcript generation for supported languages. So if you have edit permissions to a video stored in SharePoint OneDrive, this feature will allow you to generate closed captions and transcripts for the language spoken in the video. Now, this has only been available up to this point in English, but they have completely blown it out in terms of all kinds of languages, different types of English, uh, Canadian, Indian, and United Kingdom, and Australian, and New Zealand, <laughs> Chinese, German, Portuguese, Danish, you name it, it keeps going on for quite a while. But again, really nice way to be able to get captions for people who may not be able to understand the language that's coming out, or they prefer to read it instead of try to hear it. This will be a really good feature. So, And both of those were coming out this month and should be launched. Um, Tamara, 
you already went, didn't you? Yep. So for me, I think I don't really have too many. I think uh, Viva Topics um, in Yammer Preview. So that is coming out. And Microsoft Teams, Get Teams template list via the Graph API. So we have some things coming out there for developers. And then um, really those are my big things that I see. Oh, recommendations. The other one, Viva is recommendations to send praise in Viva Insight. So it will mm. surface pre-populated suggestions for you to auto-praise people um, for signals such, to, such as your collaboration activity. So <laughs> pre-praising people based on your collaboration. Tom, so, it would be good for you to praise Tamara right about now. It could make for a happy home life. <laughs> Adam, smile. <laughs> okay. I'm already so, happy. Thank you, Tom. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, Adam, what do you have for launched? Uh, there's a couple cool things going through and launched as you're going through and looking at what's on there. Um, again, similar to what I talked about in rolling out, but not for government clouds, they've now launched the MIP protection over PDF files uh, for Word, Excel, and PowerPoint on the PC. Uh, that's for the normal clouds, not the, the government clouds. That should actually be the live. Normal the normal clouds. The normal clouds. <laughs> but that, that should be launched for users now, which is nice to have. Uh, that's funny. Is that all you got, Adam? Yeah, all I got. <laughs> all right. Well, we have nothing in canceled this week. So the cancel goblins have been um, in their caves this week. So nothing is canceled. And that is our list of updates for the week. I am guessing that next week is either going to be extremely busy or extremely quiet because it is the week pre-ignite. Or is next week ignite? I can't uh, remember. No, week after next. Okay. So, <clears throat> so week of the and, 14th. Yeah. And then we're going to be taking a break the week of Ignite um, and then come back and doing a big summary show post Ignite. So uh, Tamara and Tom will be in the Ozarks at the Branson event um, for Ignite. They'll be live streaming Ignite and then delivering some sessions, I believe, um, at the big community show. Adam, are you going to be at the community show? I don't know where Adam's going to be. Um, Okay, and then I'll be at um, Ignite. I'm going to be attending Ignite, and I just found out I'll be doing an expert session on Viva. So if you Yay. have questions on Viva, you can come and ask me and your um, other community folks and some product team folks, and we'll get you get you some answers about Viva. So excited to be included in that. So we will be spread out uh, across country for <laughs> the week of Ignite, but excited to get back and give you guys some summaries. So. Look forward to seeing everybody uh, next week and then for a big summary after Ignite. So thanks, everybody. Stay dry. Thanks. Bye-bye. Oh, I'm going to try. Try not to float <laughs> away this week, y'all. <laughs> yeah. Bye, everyone. Thanks, guys. Bye.